In this video, we're going to finish the midpoint formula worksheet on the CUDA software website under the Infinite Algebra 1 section. There will be a link in the description below so you know how to access this free worksheet. Now, our directions for the last 10 problems state that given the midpoint and one endpoint of a line segment, we're going to be finding the other endpoint. So looking at number 21, we're going to be using the midpoint formula. However, remember the midpoint is x sub m, y sub m, where the x coordinate for that midpoint is x1 plus x2 over 2, and the y coordinate, y sub m, is y1 plus y2 over 2. Now, in the previous two videos for this worksheet, we were finding our midpoint. However, as opposed to finding the midpoint, we're given the midpoint, so we're going to be finding either x1 and y1 or x2 and y2. So our midpoint x sub m is 8, and our x sub 1 value will be negative 9. So we'll have 8 equal to negative 9 plus x sub 2 over 2. And for y sub m, if y sub m is 14, that'll be equal to y sub 1, negative 1, plus y sub 2 divided by 2. So what we're going to need to do in both of these is multiply by 2. So multiplying the right hand side by 2 and the left hand side by 2. 2 times 8 is 16, so I have 16 equal to negative 9 plus x sub 2. And we multiply by 2 in order to get this 2 out of the denominator. So then all I need to do is add 9 to each side to get that 25 is equal to x sub 2. And remember that x sub 2 is the x coordinate or the x value for the other endpoint that we're trying to locate. Now, going through the same steps for my y value, I'll multiply both sides by 2. So 2 times 14 is 28, so that'll be 28 equal to negative 1 plus y sub 2 because that 2 cancels out. Then all I need to do is add 1 to both sides. 28 plus 1 is 29. So 29 is equal to y sub 2, which is the y value for that other end point. So my solution will be 25, 29 as the end point that's missing. So essentially, I'm working backwards, given my midpoint, to find either x1 and y1 or x2 and y2. So let's continue on to number 22. In number 22, x sub m is 6, y sub m is 9. So let's make 10, 12, x sub 2, y sub 2, just to show you that it doesn't matter exactly what you label it as. Just as long as the midpoint goes into the midpoint coordinate spot and the endpoint values go in for the endpoint values. So x sub m equals x sub 1 plus x sub 2 over 2. So x sub m is 6, and that's equal to x sub 1 plus x sub 2, which is 10, divided by 2. And y sub m, that's 9, is going to equal y sub 1 plus y sub 2, so y sub 1 plus 12, since y sub 2 is 12, all over 2. Let's solve for x sub 1, and we'll do that by multiplying both sides by 2. Our 2's will cancel out on the right hand side, so we'll get 12 equal to x sub 1 plus 10, so all we need to do is subtract 10 from both sides to get that a positive 2 is equal to x sub 1. For our y value, we'll multiply both sides by 2. 2 times 9 is 18, so 18 is equal to y sub 1 plus 12. So then we'll subtract 12 from both sides to get that 6 is equal to y sub 1. So 2 is our x coordinate value and 6 is our y coordinate value for the other missing end point. So our one end point is 10, 12, and our other end point is 2, 6. And number 23, x sub 1, y sub 1 is negative 8, negative 10. x sub m, because this is our midpoint, is 10, and y sub m is negative 7. So I'll have 10, my x value for my midpoint, equivalent to the sum of the endpoint's x values. So that'll be negative 8 plus x sub 2 over 2. And then for y sub m, I'll have negative 7, and that's going to be equal to the sum of my y values over 2. So negative 10 plus y sub 2 over 2. Multiplying by 2 in this first equation, my 2's will cancel out, so I get 20 
equal to negative 8 plus x sub 2. Then I'll add 8 to both sides in order to isolate that x sub 2, so 28 is equal to x sub 2. Then multiplying by 2 in my other equation, 2 times negative 7 is negative 14, and that's going to be equivalent to negative 10 plus y sub 2. So adding 10 to both sides will give me that negative 4 is equal to y sub 2. So my coordinate for my end point in number 23 is 28, negative 4. And if you want to double check, feel free to plug in x sub 1 plus x sub 2, divide that by 2, and see if you get your x coordinate for your midpoint, and then add y sub 1 plus y sub 2 and divide that by 2 and see if you get negative 7. That's just one way to double check. Now, continuing on to number 24, x sub 1, y sub 1, our midpoint is x sub m, y sub m. So x sub m, 3, is equal to negative 11 plus x sub 2 divided by 2. So I'll multiply both sides by 2 to get that 6 is equal to negative 11 plus x sub 2, which when I add 11 to both sides, I'll get that 17 equals x sub 2. And now to find y sub 2, y sub m equals negative 11. So negative 11 equals 9 plus y sub 2 divided by 2. Multiplying both sides by 2, 2 times negative 11 is negative 22. So negative 22 equals 9 plus y sub 2. Subtracting 9 from both sides, I'll get that negative 31, since negative 22 minus 9 is negative 31, that's equal to y sub 2. So x sub 2, y sub 2, 17, negative 31. That's the coordinates of my other end point. And number 25, my x sub m is 12. So 12 equals x sub 1, which is negative 2, plus x sub 2 over 2. Multiplying both sides by 2 to cancel out that 2 from my denominator, I'll get that 24 is equal to negative 2 plus x sub 2. So adding 2 to both sides, I'll get that 26 equals x sub 2. Now for my y sub 2 value, y sub m is negative 10, so negative 10 is going to equal 7 plus y sub 2, since 7 is equal to y sub 1, and then I'm going to divide y sub 1 plus y sub 2 by 2. So multiplying both sides by 2, I'll cancel out that 2 in my denominator. 2 times negative 10 is negative 20, and negative 20 is equal to 7 plus y sub 2. So all I have left to do is subtract 7 to get that negative 27 is equal to y sub 2. So my coordinate is 26, negative 27 for the end point that's missing in number 25. In number 26, I'll label x sub 1, y sub 1, and then x sub m and y sub m. So x sub m, 10, equals x sub 1, 11, plus x sub 2 divided by 2. Multiplying both sides by 2, I'll get that 20 is equal to 11 plus x sub 2, and then subtracting by 11, 20 minus 11 is a positive 9, and 9 is equal to x sub 2. For my y sub 2 value, I'll have y sub m, which is 14, and that's equal to the sum of my y values of my endpoints, so that's 14 plus y sub 2, and then I'll divide that by 2. Multiplying both sides by 2, 2 times 14 is 28, so 28 is equal to 14 plus y sub 2. So then I'll subtract 14 from both sides, 28 minus 14 is 14, so 14 equals y sub 2. Therefore, my coordinates for my end point at number 26 are 9, 14. Now, continuing on to number 27, if you notice in each of the steps, we're multiplying by 2 at the start. So, as opposed to writing x sub m equal to x sub 1 plus x sub 2, dividing that by 2, why don't we solve for x sub 2 and then use that as our formula? So, multiplying both sides by 2, we'll get 2 times x sub m equal to x1 plus x2. So then we'll just subtract x1 from both sides. So 2 times x sub m minus x sub 1 equals x sub 2. 
And this is the same for the y values. 2 times y sub m minus y sub 1 equals y sub 2. So let's use that instead. So 14 is x sub 1, negative 8 is y sub 1, 5 is x sub m, and 8 is y sub m. So I'm going to be using this in order to find my endpoint coordinate. And what I did was I just took my midpoint formula and then solved for an endpoint coordinate instead of having it set to be that midpoint coordinate. So now I'll write that x sub 2 equals 2 times x sub m, so that's 2 times 5, and then I'll subtract my x sub 1 value, so subtracting 14 from that. 2 times 5 is 10, and then I'm subtracting 14, so 10 minus 14 is equal to a negative 4. And then let's do the same for our y coordinate. y sub 2 is equal to 2 times y sub m, which is 8, minus y sub 1. So that's minus a negative 8. 2 times 8 is 16, and when we're subtracting a negative 8, that's the same as adding a positive 8. 16 plus 8 equals a positive 24. So my x coordinate is negative 4, and my y coordinate is 24. Negative 4, 24 is my solution in number 27. So let's continue using this way since our midpoint formula is written in a way that's equivalent to our endpoint. So again, remember x sub 2 and y sub 2. x sub 2 is equal to 2 times x sub m minus x sub 1. And then y sub 2 equals 2 times y sub m minus y sub 1. So here we have x sub 1 and y sub 1, and then x sub m and y sub m. But note that we also could have solved for x sub 1 and y sub 1 to get that x sub 1 equals 2 times x sub m minus x sub 2, and then y sub 1 equals 2 times y sub m minus y sub 2. But regardless, those formulas are the same. So x sub 2 is equal to 2 times x sub m, which is 10, and then I'm going to be subtracting x sub 1, which is negative 9. 2 times 10 is 20, and then when I'm subtracting a negative 9, that's the same as adding a positive 9. 20 plus 9 is 29. For y sub 2, that's 2 times y sub m, which is negative 7, and I'll be subtracting y sub 1, which is 0. 2 times negative 7 is negative 14, and subtracting 0 from that will be negative 14. So my endpoint is 29, negative 14. And number 29, remember, x sub 2 equals 2 times x sub m, so x sub m is 1 half, and then we're subtracting x sub 1, which is subtracting a negative 5 sixths. 2 times 1 half will be 2 over 2, which is a positive 1. And then we're subtracting a negative 5 6, but that's the same as adding 5 6. Now, in order to add these together, I'm going to need a common denominator. So I'm going to rewrite 1 as 6 over 6, since 6 divided by 6 is equal to 1. So 6 over 6 plus 5 6, adding my numerators together over that same denominator, 6 plus 5 is 11, so that's 11 over 6. And this fraction cannot be simplified any further, so that's my x value for my endpoint that we're locating. Now, for y sub 2, that's going to be 2 times y sub m, which is negative 1, and then we're going to be subtracting y sub 1, which is a negative 1 third. So 2 times negative 1 is negative 2, and then we're going to be subtracting a negative 1 third, which is the same as adding a positive 1 third. Now, in order to add these fractions, I need a common denominator. So this negative 2, I'm going to change so that it's over 3. So I'm going to multiply by 3 over 3. So negative 2 times 3 over 3, so multiplying negative 2 by 1, and then adding that to 1 third. Negative 2 times 3 is negative 6, so I'll have negative 6 thirds plus 1 third, which is equal to negative 5 thirds. And I got negative 6 thirds, and you can double check, negative 6 divided by 3 is indeed negative 2. So negative 5 thirds 
is my y coordinate for my end point. So 11 sixths, negative 5 thirds. And lastly, in this video, I'm going to go over number 30. If you haven't done so already, remember to click that like button and subscribe to my channel. Also, if you are confused on any point, leave a comment below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. So in number 30, we'll have x1, y1 as 2 and then 12 sevenths, x sub m is 1 third, and y sub m is negative 8 fifths. So x sub 2 equals 2 times x sub m, which is 1 third, and then I'll be subtracting x sub 1, which is 2. 2 times 1 third is 2 thirds, and I'm subtracting 2. However, my 2 thirds and 2, I need a common denominator. So I'll have 2 thirds minus 2, but I'll be multiplying that 2 by 3 over 3. So multiplying that 2 by 1 will not change the value. So I'll have 2 thirds minus 6 thirds. 2 thirds minus 6 thirds, 2 minus 6 is negative 4. So I'll have negative 4 thirds as my x coordinate. Now let's find our y coordinate. y sub 2 equals 2 times y sub m, which is negative 8 fifths. And then I'll be subtracting y sub 1, which is 12 sevenths. Now 2 times negative 8 fifths, 2 times negative 8 is negative 16, so that's negative 16 fifths, and I'm subtracting 12 sevenths. However, I need a common denominator in order to add or subtract. So I'm going to be taking my negative 16 fifths and multiplying that by 7 over 7. And then for my 12 sevenths, when I subtract that, I'm going to be multiplying that 12 sevenths, however, by 5 over 5. That way I can subtract it. So negative 16 times 7 equals negative 112, and that's over 5 times 7, which is 35. So again, negative 16 times 7 is negative 112, and that's over 35. And then I'll be subtracting 12 times 5, which is 60, and that's over 7 times 5, which is 35. So you can see we have a common denominator and can indeed subtract negative 112 minus 60 equals negative 172. So negative 172 over 35 cannot be simplified any further and is the y value for my end point. So my solution to number 30 is negative 4 thirds, negative 172 30 fifths. And with that, we wrap up this video and this worksheet. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And as always, like, subscribe, and share.